Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and in this video we are going to be looking at how to fully utilize Wireshark. Now this is going to be part of a uh, small series that I really want to, uh, you know, cover in regards to, uh, you know, network uh, traffic and monitoring and it's something that I haven't covered on the channel and a lot of you guys pointed that out. Now I do have videos on Wireshark uh, but looking back at them, uh, I really don't, I'm not pleased with them in the sense that I'm not, uh, I, I don't think I captured uh, uh, the information the way I should have. That was when the channel was very, very young and I was still, uh, you know, just working on, on essentially explaining concepts. I think I'm much better now and I'm much better suited now to actually uh, explain or, you know, show you guys how to use Wireshark correctly and explain a few of the important aspects of networking. It's something that I do professionally, so uh, hopefully I can give you uh, a much better insight into it. Now, before we actually get started with today's video, I just want to let you guys know that I have created a Discord server. It's been online. I think I posted the updates um, at the beginning of the week on the channel. If you didn't get it, I will have the link in the description so you can join uh, You can join up. And uh, it's a really, really great place, place right now with a lot of people there, uh, really knowledgeable people. So uh, yeah, you can go ahead and join and, uh, you know, have uh, have fun and, uh, you know, go ahead and, uh, and get started learning. That being said, let's get started with today's video. So uh, I'm currently running Kali Linux and it might seem a little bit weird to some of you, uh, but for those of you who use uh, the uh, XFCE desktop environment, this is really nothing special. Uh, I'm currently running this on my uh, on my work VM right now. This is what I use uh, professionally, and uh, I'm I'm upgrading all my, my other systems. So uh, I'll be using this. There isn't really any difference as long as you have Wireshark installed on Windows, uh, Mac, I believe, uh, and on Linux, uh, the the, uh, the the process will follow. Now I'm not going to cover installation because that's pretty simple. Even for Windows, it's simply a setup file. Uh, and let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by explaining what exactly Wireshark is. All right. So Wireshark is simply put a tool that allows you to capture and analyze packets on a network. All right. And the great thing about Wireshark is it's completely free. You can install it on any operating system and you can run it and, um, you know, you, you can go ahead and analyze uh, the packets or data that's uh, going through your network. Now, that's very important. And I've mentioned this severally. A lot of people don't seem to understand how this can be important. This can uh, be used for uh, what well, I, I would say. Uh, getting uh, a, a better foothold on the network that one uh, has exploited or essentially just getting an idea of what services are running on different computers, etc, etc. Not really going to go into that. Now, uh, I am going to say beforehand that if you really want to understand and get the most out of Wireshark, you really need to know the OSI layer or the OSI model uh, I would say quite deeply because Wireshark is used for networking and I've mentioned to everyone who's asked me before, what's the most important thing I, uh, they should learn in the beginning before they get into penetration testing. And I always recommend learning uh, networking because it goes a long way and you'll have a better understanding of all, you know, different types of services, how data is sent from uh, one computer to another, whether you're talking about a local network or you're talking about two computers communicating with each other, uh, or with each other over the internet. All right. So, uh, Wireshark essentially allows you to capture data uh, on a network and allows you to analyze them, which is probably the most important thing because we have uh, many other, uh, you know, traffic capturing tools uh, like TCP dump that doesn't allow you to actually uh, analyze them uh, really uh, in depth. Okay, so um, the data captured by Wireshark is captured in the form of packets. All right, so packets are essentially pieces or chunks of data on the network and this is essentially how data is transferred over a network it's transferred in the form of chunks or uh, you know pieces of chunks uh, called packets all right and this means that uh, data can be sent in a manageable uh, and efficient way now i'm not going to go into the uh, to the workings of packets that's something that requires quite a bit of time and hopefully i'll make a video on that because you know i really want to cover networking but uh, here we go so uh, when we talk about how wireshark does this Essentially what happens is Wireshark captures the data from the network interface. You specify the interface from which you want to capture data. Now this is very important. Uh, in my example, I don't have my wireless card right now. And uh, if I did, I wouldn't be able to use it. 
when you want to capture data on a network that's not yours or you know data that does not belong to your computer uh, then you'll need to have uh, an interface that uh, allows or allows you to essentially uh, an interface that can be uh, put into monitor mode or a promiscuous mode in which it can actually capture packets that do not belong to that computer and MAC address. I hope that uh, that is understandable. So uh, if you are planning to monitor data on a public Wi-Fi network, like most of you do when you go to coffee shops, um, well, many of you actually tell me this and uh, you want to boot up Wireshark and you know, the first thing you need to do is set uh, your uh, network interface card or your wireless adapter onto monitor mode. Now I'm running on Ethernet 0, which is connected uh, in my case to a switch. Uh, and then that is connected to the access point. Now that means that I'll be able to capture any data that's going through the switch, which means all computers, uh, you know, that, that are connected to that switch, I'll be able to get the data they're sending back and forth uh, to and from the access point. Now, uh, will you have Ethernet access on your local coffee shop? No, not, not really, you're talking about a wireless network, which means in that case, you really need to have monitor mode in my case. Uh, and it's a very unlikely case. Uh, you will never, pr probably never be connected to uh, to the Ethernet. That if, if you are an attacker or if you have direct access to a computer on the network, then you might be able to. But uh, in my case, I'm simply trying to explain uh, the inner workings of Wireshark and how it works and the interface really. We'll, we'll be looking at how to capture data wirelessly uh, probably in the next set of videos. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just start up Wireshark here and we can go on explaining and understanding what's going on. So I've just typed in Wireshark and uh, don't worry if it gives you that error, that's a root uh, or a, a pseudo error. So I'm just going to hit OK. And as you can see, I have Ethernet uh, 0 here, which is my adapter. And it gives me the IP and uh, appropriate MAC address if I hover over it. So I'm just going to double click on that. And Wireshark is going to start capturing all packets that are being sent to and from the switch um, and, you know, so on and so forth. So I'm just going to let that run for a while. And uh, I'm just going to stop that right now. All right. So let me just minimize that for a while. So when it comes down to Wireshark um, and how the data uh, and how the packets are essentially displayed as you just saw to the user, they're displayed in terms of their addresses and the protocols that are being used. You might be saying, well, what exactly does that mean? Well, the great thing about Wireshark is uh, it gives you information like the source uh, IP and the destination IP, as well as the Mac, uh, the, the source Mac and the destination Mac, which is very good to, uh, for understanding what computers are communicating with each other and how they're communicating with each other, what type of data is being sent back and forth, how a computer is, you know, you well, people like using this to see what pe websites people are visiting. So, you know, uh, they like uh, essentially knowing what server the uh, a, a specific target is connecting to and essentially just building a profile from there. All right. Now, when we talk about Wireshark and its functionality, it has a ton of functionality and this comes in place of uh, what I would say are filters and essentially uh, going through the data that you've been able to capture and getting exactly what you want. All right. So let me just move on to the interface. All right. So I'm just going to go on to the interface here and I've stopped capturing as you probably saw. So with Wireshark, let me just go over the interface really quickly. So in Wireshark, you have your top toolbar right over here and you have your second toolbar, which essentially extends or gives you specialized functionality. So you can start capturing packets. You can stop capturing pa packets, sorry, and you can restart the current capture. Uh, you can go ahead and look at your capture options, which allows you to specify the um, the adapter that you want to use or the network interface. You can uh, look at the output format in which you're essentially uh, saving the, the data as if you want to uh, output it or export it. And you have options here in regards to the packets. Now, we are not going to look at this, uh, but I would recommend that you make sure that you have your Resolve MAC addresses checked uh, just in case it's not. So I'm going to close because uh, I don't want to access that menu. Uh, if you look at this right over here, that allows you to open a capture file that you previously captured. Uh, this allows you to save this current capture. Very important. Close the current capture file, reload this file. You can search or find a packet uh, that's uh, via the packet ID, I would believe. You can go, to, you know, this essentially allows you to navigate. So I can go to the next packet and I can go back right over here. You then have your specific packet. You can jump to a specific packet. Uh, you can go to the first packet, that means the first packet captured uh, in this capture, and you can go to the last packet captured. So just extends functionality here. 
Now we're not going to be talking about the top bar right now. What I want to cover is the interface right over here. All right, so we have captured data uh, right over here and uh, don't worry about it. Uh, this is where people, I would say, try uh, or get quite, um, quite confused. So I've zoomed that in and you can do that if you want to. And let me just extend this so we can actually see what's going on here. All right, so uh, we can see interesting things happening here. All right, and uh, the first thing you, you need to know is what this menu is called. Now, by default, uh, Wireshark is sorted out this way. You have your first, second, and third menu, each displaying various aspects of the data captured. Now, the most important one is right over here. This is the packet menu, or, or, or the, sorry, the packet list, as I would like to call it. Not really the menu. I'll explain where that comes into play. Uh, now, the, the packet list, essentially the packet list menu, I like calling it that, the packet list menu essentially shows you all the captured packets with their, uh, with their respective information. I'll explain that in a second. And the most important information that we're looking for here or that you should be looking at is you're looking for uh, the source and destination IP and you're looking for the protocol, essentially understanding uh, what, type of I, I, what type of data is being transferred. Now, the information tab right over here essentially contains information about the packet uh, and its nature and what the purpose of the packet is. All right. Uh, now, when you talk about the protocol, you can see that I have quite a few protocols here running on various computers on my network. You have OpenVPN. We have an ARP request, which is probably sent from my uh, router right over here. You can look at the source, which uh, it already resolves uh, as uh, we already know my default gateway. Uh, you then have your uh, well, most of the other packets were uh, were essentially the OpenVPN packets right over here. Uh, now, when we talk about data being uh, like, for example, data like TCP, let me just click on that packet so that I can essentially uh, explain what's going on here. So if I just click on a TCP packet right over here, let me just click on this one right over here. So we talk about uh, the packet, uh, the packet list menu. This essentially allows you to select the packet that you want. Now, this is not in enough information to understand what this packet does. And that's where you have your second menu, which is, in, is your uh, which is called your packet details menu. All right. Now, this is where uh, having a good understanding of the OSI uh, model is extremely important. Now, if you don't know about the OSI model, I'm just going to go over it very briefly. Uh, your OSI model is comprised of the physical layer, the data link layer, the network layer, the transport layer, the session layer or the presentation layer. And you have your fine, uh, finally, you have your application layer. Now, uh, when we talk about the data that's captured right over here, I need to explain a few things really, really in depth. All right. Now, this, uh, the, the, the packet details menu will display, uh, information for the selected packet. So if I switch the packet, you can see it changes. It shows me, uh, the packet details, uh, for that spe specific packet. All right. So uh, I've just clicked on this TCP packet that was captured and it was sent from uh, one of my computers with the following IP and it was sent to the uh, one of these computers right over here, which is probably one of my Windows operating systems right over here. So uh, what we're talking about in regards to the details or the data captured here, you can see if we are to click on the frame now, the, it's very important to understand what a frame means. All right. So a frame can be understood as uh, data that is being sent uh, through a specific um, uh, through a specific layer on the OSI model. Now, when we talk about a packet, that again uh, occurs on a different layer. So the uh, when you're talking about a frame, this usually occurs on the data link layer. All right. So this means this uh, this information was sent on the data link layer, which makes sense because it's um, a computer is going through a switch. And all computers are connected to this switch, which, uh, you know, gives them internet access and allows them to communicate, uh, to communicate with each other. Uh, you then have, if you ever find a packet right here or something called a packet, uh, that is probably one you will find on a wireless network. That means you're dealing with, uh, the network layer. All right. The network layer essentially is sorted in terms of IP, you know, ICMP, uh, and all the other different protocols. Now, when you talk about the next layer right over here, and we just click on this, this, uh, this can be considered to be the, um, the transport layer, or I'll explain that as, as in regards to how they are grouped. Uh, you can consider this to be the, the data link layer, 
or the network layer it really doesn't matter because the the piece of vital information that's being carried here is the source uh, mac address and the destination mac address which uh, is right over here and it tells you the type of uh, the version the ip protocol version you then have your uh, internet protocol version right over here which is still in your network layer uh, so again we're still dealing with the network layer here because the data is being transferred by the internet protocol and you know it's ipv6 and this contains your source and destination ip with along with the the uh the packet headers which you can go ahead and dissect if you want to we'll be looking at that but for now let's just uh let's just leave that right uh, over there now when we talk about the transmission control protocol this essentially is dealing with the transport layer where you have your you know tcp or udp so this is TCP, which means uh, it's going from a certain port to, uh, you know, from a source port to a destination port. And it tells you what ports these, uh, the, the communication, uh, what ports the data is being sent from. So again, understanding the OSI layer is uh, extremely important and gives you an, uh, an advantage in terms of understanding the type of data you've captured and how to dissect it and understand the, uh, the, the separation of data even in in as simple of a component as a as a packet you can see how much information a packet uh, is able to give you right over here so you know it tells you your source destination mac address it tells you whether it's a frame or a packet uh, you have the ip version the ip protocol version and again you can go ahead and look at the source and destination ip uh, you can go ahead and look at the the headers and the flags if you want to and you then have your uh, you, you then have your network layer, which is uh, essentially, uh, sorry, not your network layer, your transport layer, which essentially contains, uh, whether essentially has the protocol that you're using, whether that be the TCP or UDP protocol, again, very important, and the ports that they are connecting to in regards to the source port and the destination port. All right, so that was a mouthful. Hopefully that made uh, sense. Um, so now we are on to the last one, which uh, really confuses people for some reason. I usually see students freaking out when they see this one, essentially because they think it has a lot to do with uh, with uh, with being good at Wireshark. Wireshark is simply a tool that allows you to analyze packets and understanding it is really very simple. So when we're talking about the uh, the last menu right over here this uh, is the called the packets uh, the packet bytes menu all right so the packet bytes menu essentially displays the raw packet data this is how the packet data this is how the data in the packet is packaged or this is uh, how the data is uh, is really when it's sent and uh, you you can see that it's quite unreadable and uh, that's a good thing but uh, if you ever see um, for example uh, if if I was to just right click over here on one of these packets and follow the TCP stream and uh, I'm to analyze the data, you can see th since this is sort of like a, uh, this is really a meaningless packet because I, I, I'm not really able to dissect what's being sent from computer to computer. So you can see the data is pretty much scrambled here, which means we, we, cannot, um, we cannot essentially dissect what's being sent. Uh, if we click on another one right over here and I just fo you know follow the TCP stream, uh, again, same thing. We really can't dissect anything. Uh, but when we talk about the packet bytes menu, this essentially displays, you know, the raw packet data and it's sorted in terms of hex and uh, ASCII. So hexadecimal and ASCII. The first menu right over here, people get confused. That's simply an offset to tell you uh, the amount of data that you've captured or the amount of data in the packet. All right. And uh, when we talk about the, the, the other two columns right over here, that is simply your hexadecimal data. Now, when we talk about hexadecimal data and uh, whether or not we want to view the data in terms of bytes and bits, which is something a lot of you guys actually point out, uh, viewing the packets uh, in, in terms of bits is always recommended because you get to see the real picture or the, you, you get to understand how data is sorted out in each individual packet. So uh, to do that, what you want to do is you want to right click over here and you can see you can convert it. So you can show the bytes as hexadecimal. And, uh, you know, I can show it as bits, for example, which shows me, you know, all the zeros and ones. And finally, it just shows me the packet data right over here. And again, you can you can display it as ASCII or EB uh, or uh, sorry, EBDIC, which I'll explain in a later video. But I'm guessing you know what ASCII is. And uh, let me just leave it as bits and ASCII. And from here onwards, you can sort of understand what was being sent in the packet. So again, just to summarize what we've gone through, you, you have your, your, your packet list menu, which essentially displays all the packets that you've captured. 
Uh, you then have your packet details menu, and then finally your packet uh, your packet bytes menu, which are all display uh, individual information or individual pieces of information. The first one being, uh, or the packet list, uh, essentially displaying all the, the captured packets. The second one, uh, where you have your packet details, essentially displays all, in, uh, all relevant information in regards to the packet that you've selected. And finally, your packet bytes menu, which displays the raw packet data, which you can view in multiple, in multiple forms and dissect uh, or sort of make sense of. Now, you can see something interesting happened right at the top over here. And this is your filter bar, which I hope... Um, to explain in the next video when we talk about uh, uh, filters, which is extremely important. Now, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I know it was quite a mouthful. Uh, if there is anything I want to tell you is to, I would recommend that you actually go through the OSI uh, model once more just to understand uh, or to kind of uh, repatriate all the information uh, that you've learned in this video and understand it even deeper. Because if you go through where I explained the packet details right over here, you'll understand what I'm talking about and you'll get a clearer understanding of what exactly I was trying to put across. Uh, that being said, that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you found value in this video, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section or on my social networks. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.